Hi everybody, welcome back to A Case of the Jills. I am freezing today, I don't know why. So I have this goofy hat on my head, but it's either this or I just wrap myself in hot water bottles, I don't know. I was inspired to do this video today, which I'm gonna call the first in a series of videos dedicated to discussing hormonal health. I was inspired to do this video today because I was watching another YouTube video yesterday by one of my favorite YouTubers, someone, another person from Rhode Island who I started watching just because she's super cute and fun and amazing, Amanda Bucci. And this is not one of those call out videos, please don't say that. What this is, is a video that I am inspired to do because Tulip wanted me to. One of the things I really love about Amanda is the fact that she's completely honest about her life, which is what makes her very, very successful, entertaining, and engaging on YouTube. She's very honest, and in her video, she talked about how she went and had a blood test because she hasn't gotten her period back since she went through her last bikini prep. And then in uh, another scene in the video, she was talking about doing intermittent fasting and how she felt as though that was working successfully for her. And this is where Auntie Jill went, oh man. Um, I'm not a doctor and I don't want to tell anyone what to do, but intermittent fasting and trying to get a period do not go well together. As you know, I have gone through and told you a lot about my amenorrhea story, how I ended up with amenorrhea, how I beat it. In those videos, I talked about how I was going to go into the science of what I researched in order to understand my situation. I was very, very, um, dissatisfied with the information that I was getting from doctors at the time. None of them took the time to understand the needs of an athlete or the situation that I personally was going through. They dismissed me by saying I was too skinny and had too low body fat, even though that was not the case. I hovered always between 18 and 21 percent body fat, which is not considered low enough to dip into that female athlete triad zone. I was very dissatisfied with the information, so I went and studied myself. I found scientific studies, not other people's interpretations of scientific studies, but stuff from the National Institutes of Health, and I also studied this book, which you can see all my notations hanging off it. I feel as though this book is called Roar, and it is by Stacy Sims, PhD, and you can get this book on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. I will link it below because I feel as though if you are a female athlete, this is absolutely necessary for you to read. It is so incredibly enlightening. So I want to be clear and tell you that I am not a doctor. Let me just repeat that over and over again. I am not a doctor. I may have been married to a doctor once, but I am not a doctor. What I am doing is I am just sharing with you the science and then you can do what you need to do. By the end of this video, I promise you, you're gonna have a much clearer perspective on what is going on with your body. Okay, how did we get here? We got here because as female endurance athletes, we're looking to have better performance. And over the last several years, there has been a lot of information about things like using lower carbohydrate diets, trying things like going into fat adapted diets, which again are lower carbohydrate diets that are higher in fat and protein. Some studies were done to show that this could have a beneficial effect for endurance athletes. Additionally, there have been a lot of women that have been trying paleo diets, again for the same reason, that they will enjoy increased performance. Also, there are many in the bikini competitor and bodybuilding world who use things like Again, lower carbohydrate diets, but also intermittent fasting, calorie restriction in order to get the results that they're looking for. The information that we get about these diets and their success is based on studies that have been done on men. In fact, for the most part, if you read Stacey Sims' book, you will see that she describes that women who are in the luteal phase, which is the phase between ovulation and when you get your period, are typically excluded from most sports nutrition and sports performance scientific studies. Why? Because hormones mess things up. Well, tell me something I don't know. The results that you get from these studies, while yes, you may find better performance in certain areas or you may lose fat, you are doing so to the detriment of the production of your female hormones. So I wanna go into the science of this very, very lightly. In fact, I'm gonna sum it up very quickly. I'm gonna assume that you know what a hypothalamus is and the pituitary gland, and I'm gonna figure that you sort of know what female hormones are all about. I'm gonna make this very simple. Glands can only produce a certain amount of hormone. When your body, your female body, feels stress, 
it will shoot up the amount of cortisol that is produced. Shooting up the amount of cortisol that is produced means that the female hormone production goes down. When female hormone production goes down, all kinds of problems, you don't get a period. That's the simplest way I can describe it. So as a female, what you want to do is you want to keep those cortisol levels down so that you do not steal from the production of female hormones. There are two studies that describe this very, very well. I'm going to just peek at my notes right here and I'm gonna give you the two names of the studies. I will link them below. The first study is called Functional Hypothalamic Amenorrhea and its Influence on Women's Health. And this is a study that also corroborates the idea that, that hypothalamic amenorrhea comes from an increase of cortisol production from the adrenal glands, thereby a decrease in production of female hormone. Second study is called Athletic Amenorrhea, Energy Deficit or Psychogenic Challenge. We find that exercise can be the culprit of what ends up putting the person in a state of amenorrhea because the increased energy expenditure from exercise is not met with an adequate nutrition response, meaning you're not fueling up properly with all the increased exercise. Your body senses panic, it increases cortisol, then your female hormones get decreased because they simply can't be produced in adequate amounts, then you lose your period. This is called a chronic energy imbalance. Please remember this, chronic, meaning it's happening all the time, energy, meaning food, imbalance, meaning you're not eating enough of it. So if you're like me, you've always heard about the female athlete triad, and you've heard about this whole thing where women, you know, it's the very stereotypical skinny female runner, she loses a ton of weight, she loses her period, and she has bone density issues. And everybody and their mother wants to tell you, oh, it's a body fat issue. Well, if that's the case, then how do you tell a person who's a CrossFitter and she has 25% body fat that she doesn't have a period because she doesn't have enough body fat? That makes absolutely no sense. So it turns out that it's not low body fat. In fact, again, taking the research from this book, it is, and I'm gonna read from my notes, so pardon me looking down. It's a hormonal disruption resulting from inadequate nutrition. The low carb, high fat, high protein diet fad increases the amount of problems that women are finding. The problem is this, your body thinks it's in a famine. I know this is a hard thing to understand that actually the female body was created to make babies. This may not be the way you wanna spend your time. I'm 40, I don't have children, I'm not gonna have children. But historically speaking, the female body was created to make babies. So when your body feels as though it is an inhospitable environment for the creation of human life, it is going to shut things down. So it doesn't matter how much body fat you have, if there's this chronic energy imbalance, you may find yourself with amenorrhea. So here's what you need to do. I'm not giving you advice. I'm really not giving you advice. You need to eat enough. You need to stop fasting. You need to stop intermittent fasting. You just have to feel appropriately. You just have to eat enough. You have to think about the health of your body. I'm not saying you have to have babies. I don't want babies. I'm just saying that if you want a period, if you want to be functional, you have choices. This is me being Auntie Jill for a second, okay? So just take this for what it's worth. Number one, you cannot hack your body. You can hack it into weight loss by counting macros. Absolutely, there's no question about that. You can get leaner, definitely, you can do all these things. But you cannot do those things and expect to function normally as a female, it's not gonna happen. Number two, if you're a runner, maybe you're a young runner, a cross country runner, maybe you're a marathoner, you are trying to achieve something and I understand what that is. You wanna be the smallest, you wanna be the fastest, you wanna be the lightest. I'm gonna tell you one thing right now that you're not gonna to wanna to hear. Losing your period doesn't mean you won. It's not a badge of courage, it's not a badge of honor. You didn't do something good to get there. In fact, you are hurting yourself by getting there. You are shortening your career as a runner and you are probably really setting yourself up for fertility problems later on down the road. Number three, stop looking around yourself and comparing yourself to other women that are smaller but still get a period. They are not you, you are not them. Every single female on this planet is unique as a pretty, pretty snowflake. So please, knock it off. And number four, you're not invincible. This was the hardest thing for me to realize is that I am not invincible. I actually have to take responsibility for my actions. The things that I do, the things that I am, the things that I, put myself through, I 
have a choice about. I am the one who makes this happen. So I have to think about my future. I have to think about the health of my body overall. And I'm sorry, but I know you're not gonna agree with me on this, but there's no race, there is no run, there is no training event that is more important than the health of my body over time. Okay, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm gonna stop it here. I know that I was a little bit militant in that. It's just that I really, really, really want people to be healthy. I just want us to think. I promise that once we understand all of the hormonal health issues, we can talk about ways that we can work with our bodies instead of against it. And I hope you don't think that I'm being overly mean. It's just that I really, really believe that and we can do so much better. We're so worth it. Please like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. There'll be more scientific studies and more in this series. Please go get this book. Again, I'll link it below, and I hope that you have a great day, and I hope that you're warmer than me. God, thanks for watching.